for you, I guess, just generally, did you have hesitations, concerns before agreeing to do homecoming? What kind of, what was the thought process like for you? Yeah, um, <laughs> I did. I had some hesitations. Um, you know, my feeling was like, if the money's not right, I'm not in because yeah, I love my, I love my castmates. Um, what I love to, you know, hang out with them in New Orleans again, of course. Uh, but if the cameras are rolling, you know, it just adds a level of intensity to the whole thing. Um, so it wasn't about not wanting to be with the castmates. It was more about, you know, the fact that about you know, being on reality TV in 2022. <laughs> and had you watched the other homecomings, did you kind of know what you were getting into with, you know, the video messages setting up the, these big conversations? And <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. It wasn't as like, you know, real per se. It's like a hybrid kind of sh- type of show. And I had watched the New, the New York show. So okay. I saw <laughs> some, some <drama. laughs> You saw things could go down, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm like, I'm not living with my head in the sand. Like I, I we're living in an era where, you know, you could, you could step in it and not even mean to step in it, you know? Yeah. So, Oh, of course. And that has to be, you know, because obviously we are talking a lot about race sexuality here and a lot of topics that you guys talked about back in the day are unfortunately still relevant and still, you know, being discussed now is that's something that maybe surprised you when these videos do come up showing some of these conversations from almost 20 years ago. And you're like, why, why is this still an issue? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, totally. And I mean, a lot of these issues are, you know, like the race question has been, you know, around for since the dawn of man, uh, you yeah. know, so in a way, like, I think that you could have healthy conversations around a lot of this stuff if if you go in it with the right intentions. And that, that kind of was my thought process going into it was like, you know, yeah. maybe we could, you know, share our thoughts and and and, and land the plane in a smooth fashion, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and now, you know, from the first episode, it's pretty clear that for this season, a lot of you guys didn't stay in contact after, um, I think obviously there were some falling outs for various different reasons. I'm just curious for you, was there anyone you did stay close with or, or maybe weren't as nervous about seeing? (laughs) Uh, Really? Uh, I mean, I was excited to see everybody, but the only person I ever stayed in touch with was, was Melissa throughout. Okay. So. We would periodically text and uh, a conversation here and there, but uh, but yeah, everybody else. I mean, the, the New York cast they they were all kind of going to each other's weddings and stuff, you know? right? So <laughs> that didn't happen so much with you. <laughs> no, I think we all were like, I think trying to put the real world in the rearview mirror, you know. Mm. <laughs> and, and here we are. For, we're back, <laughs> right? We're back. And, you know, back on the original series, you're kind of pegged as like the frat boy of the season, the frat boy of the house. Um, coming into the revival, was there anything about your image from back then that you maybe wanted to address or clear up or I don't know? <laughs> um, <not laughs> or is really. what, we, what we saw, what, what was accurate? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like you could, I don't even know if the like breach this on the on the show or anything like that, but I wasn't too, totally happy with how I was up portrayed out of the gate on the original show so much so that I didn't go to the rap party I was pissed and the producers were like don't worry Jamie you come around you come around I'm like but you're making me come around from something like that's like not really I didn't think that I was you know and and you know coming around for being like a reformed racist isn't like a really good coming around you know (laughs) so um but you know I know who I am and and uh they have to do what they have to do with like how they present the show. And, you know, it, it, ultimately I feel like it was all good, yeah. you know? And what was it, I guess, like for you around the time when the original show was airing? Cause I know some of your co-stars, they, they struggled with being in the limelight after other people's kind of capitalized on it a bit more. Just what was your relationship right. like with being in public after? Yeah. Um, I, I had a company at the time and I was really focused on that. Uh, I was living in San Francisco, working with that. And so I was kind of heads down into that for the the year that it was airing. And I actually weirdly didn't watch the show in its entirety back then. Really? Uh, because I revisited the show prior to shooting this reunion. And I was like sitting there in, 
in bed like watching it and i'm like it was like a, it was amazing i was like watching it for the first time and it was like it was really i was like wow that was that was, that was a decent show you know uh <laughs> but it, it was funny because i i was like dude did, did i never actually watch this show when it aired um so so yeah i think like i i liked i liked the so the the d-list celebrityness it was fun but i didn't really you know like capitalize or try to like really lean into it you know you did a few challenges though which is yes. more than i think most people have done so good good on that was there a reason why you you stopped doing those or are you happy you won and you were like okay i'm good <laughs> yeah you know um i've talked about with this guy derek who has like a challenge he's on a bunch of challenges and yep um if you really look at like the arc of the challenges there's like the first generation challenges and then there's this middle generation that happened with like you know derek and uh brad and uh, yep. you know um you know ct and like now he's back of course but like of but then course. there was like <laughs> then now, then there's like the, the next generation that's we've been experiencing for the last let's say let's say seven or eight years or whatever but when in the first generation which i was a part of like if you were in your late 20s and 30s you were considered ancient you know and i would make fun <laughs> of cyrus and mark long i'd be like you if i'm doing this when i'm 30 like please shoot me but the, it was dumb like why not just it's, it's a fun thing and so i think there was just like a different you know, a different attitude towards it. And, um, and now like, I guess CT won last one, he's like 41 years old, you know, and right. I'm mean, like Mark and Cyrus came back for all stars. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Hey, it's, it's, it's all good. I, I would, I would do another, but like at the time it was like, I did three and uh, that was good. You know, I was going to say is all star something you would be interested in now that you're back in this Paramount plus bubble. <laughs> yes. If they call me, I would, I would consider it. <laughs> and now you know getting back to homecoming i have watched the first two episodes i, I am hooked already um, oh wow i'm guessing or wondering if how surprised you were that you know the julie of it all kind of blew up night one like it's literally you guys are just sitting down to drinks and her melissa and danny are already airing everything out were you surprised it it did kind of get off to such a, a rocky beginning um not really not really no. i wasn't really surprised no um i knew that there was like a lot of unsaid and um you know just it, again it was like one of those things where i know from melissa's standpoint she's so moved on from it that it was like yeah. hard for her to even address it and yet you well we're doing this so you might as well talk about it right like yeah like for the fans right now but like it's not she didn't really care and yet it was it was kind of needed to be addressed so so yeah the fact that it just happened right out of the gates wasn't surprising to me uh i, I was say hoping, how much oh I, I was i was hoping and not i'm not spoiling anything but like you know my feeling was like whatever was the past can we like address it and grind and figure it all out and then like have a new experience in this you know next yeah. two weeks or whatever and you know you'll have to tune in to, to find out i was gonna say it does seem nice as a viewer to get it done first so that maybe there's some room for at least cohabitating the rest of the time uh, right we'll see if that can happen uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly but how much i guess how much of that situation did surprise you versus how much you already knew i know melissa obviously talked about it on the challenge back in the day i think for danny i think more people were more surprised to hear maybe his side of the, the whole issue but yeah. how much did you know going into everything i guess i knew like rumblings of it i knew melissa's yeah. story i didn't really know danny's story um but yeah, because we, Melissa, Julie, and I did a challenge called Battle of the Sexes. And that's yeah. when she kind of uh, told me all about it. Um, but I never understood like if it was ever resolved or if any. So like, this was all new to me. Just like it's new to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I rewatched the whole original season before watching the new episodes um, just to freshen everything up in my mind. But for you, I guess, what was your relationship kind of like with Julie then? Because obviously there were these flirty moments that made it on camera, but she was kind of boy crazy about everyone. It seemed right. like at different points. But, you know, seeing all the women in the cast kind of have little crushes on you. What was that kind of like seeing? And now that you have seen all the episodes for the first time yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if they 
there was a hot seat kind of thing in this new show where we might get into that kind of thing. Okay. I have um, not seen that yet. It's not in the first two episodes. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Didn't mean to spoil. You can tease it. <laughs> uh, teasing, teasing, teasing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, tune in to whatever for how we kind of hash it out or anything like that. But I think like at the time we're all, you know, post college, you know, out in the world. And uh, um, weirdly, I, I, I kind of in my own mind was like, I'm not going to get involved with anyone in the house, back, you know? And so I think in my own mind, like that might've caused some drama between Kelly and I, you know, whether that was what caused the drama, I don't know, but ultimately we did have kind of some awkwardness uh, in those months or whatever, um, you know? So I think it's just all about, you know, a bunch of single young people living in a house, there's going to be all that energy happening, you know? Right. right. I wouldn't want my early 20s film. So I, right. I give credit to anyone who was on these shows in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, you know, coming into this, I guess, who really surprised you the most with how much they've changed? I know, especially David, obviously, Tokyo has a new name. It seems like he has realized maybe the way he was acting back then is totally different from who he wants to be now is that something you saw or, or was yeah. he maybe the one who did kind of surprise you all the most well yeah I think I, I, I've said this in another interview but I do think Tokyo was kind of the most changed in a way um yeah. and like energetically meaning like who he was being in the house like he realized that and again like you just said it like when you're in your early twenties, you're still trying to figure your own life out, you know, who you yeah. are, how you are, what you're going to be, or you're not anything at that point, you know? And like, so, so I think he at the time was presenting kind of a, um, you know, an image of, of how he wanted to be. And, and it wasn't one that was like, Hey, let's hang out and let's just talk about, you know, life, liberty and the pursuit of justice or whatever, you know? So so this time around, I think like, and I'm, I'm the same way. Like I, I had my own like little agendas going on. And so for me, I was here to like connect and talk and really kind of get to know people for the first time. And I think he was kind of in a similar mindset. So, and that was different from the David or Tokyo from back, back in the day, you know? Um, right. Just but, like we're well, watching the episode yeah. where you all like sit him down and have this whole intervention really curious it's just it's wild to see now and, and i'm sure obviously i know you readdress it again on the show but yeah it's just yeah. crazy <laughs> yeah well dude and then like like i said i hadn't watched the show and i watched it too like just like you did um and it was it was it was a crazy kind of thing to watch and i will say that one of my favorite episodes of the first real world was when david did his show on the on that uh, public access television show and it was a bunch seven of like, strippers. Seven. yeah <laughs> it's like Kel kelly and i think matt had to like host the show and it, there's just like comedy like comedy gold in there that like stood the test of time so if this if this show if the real world the original real world is on paramount plus i highly recommend watching that episode it's pretty funny. yes no they're all there now i I had to rewatch oh, nice. the, the Mardi Gras episode, especially. It's one of my favorites. Just how insane, like, the whole house was. Everyone was off doing their own thing. Right. That girl who was just, like, checking her email while David was oh, <laughs> with yeah. her friend. Like, it's just <laughs> such a great moment in time encapsulated in this, like, 25-minute episode. <laughs> totally, totally. It's amazing, yeah. And, like, the, the people ask me, like, what well, my favorite time, it probably was, like, when we were on that float uh, for Mardi Gras. That was, like, one of the best best times you know <laughs> and um, you know now that you are a few months removed from doing homecoming um i guess what is the the communication like between you and your former roommates now is it is it stronger is there a group text message is are there people that you still maybe aren't as close to as you'd like to be yeah um i've, I've been texting with danny and um you know i'm as far as i'm concerned i'm cool with everybody and yeah. i i I would actually, Danny's gone back down to New Orleans a bunch over the years. And he's yeah, like, dude, yeah. you should come down for Halloween or for my fast fest or whatever. And like, I could see myself doing that now that like Airbnbs are a thing. And you, anybody can get the New Orleans feeling by just renting an Airbnb and hanging out there for a week, you know? So yeah. um, I'd like to, I, I, I would love to have a future where, yeah, Danny and I meet up. Um, um, love I, I love everybody. I think everybody's great. And I'm on good terms with everybody. 
So happy to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am looking forward to see the rest of the season. The first two episodes are great. I think, yeah, it dives into shit right away. So. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you got it. It's going to be good. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time and, you know, watching everything and talking with me. Likewise. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome, Brian. Uh, keep watching. We will. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Okay, Brian. Have a great day. Take care.